This is the Film Dimension chat. Today, I'm speaking with Jay Salahi, a filmmaker and actor. Uh, Jay, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Thanks so much cool. for having me. No problem at all. Yeah, I'm really, really good. And um, yeah, as we were just briefly uh, speaking a moment ago, um, just talking about basically being a filmmaker and how you can make films. Um, you've just made your first feature film, which we'll talk about in a moment. But how did you get involved with one wanting to make films and you've made some shorts and you want to just sort of give us sort of a, a brief history of your your filmmaking uh credits sure um first of all dan thanks for having me um northwood pie we'll talk about which is a little ten thousand dollar movie i made that i think anyone can go out and make a film still which is why it's important and fun to talk about but um you know i wanted to be a filmmaker my whole life pretty much you know i, I love movies as a little kid i remember seeing um, going to the theater at four years old and seeing The Lost World, which terrified me. I ran out the theater and I had to get talked back into going to see it. Um, but as a kid, I had, you know, all the Star Wars movies and Indiana Jones movies and Back to the Future and all that stuff on um, VHS. And the making ofs were on there. And I used to just watch the making of it as if it was a movie. You know, you watch Star Wars one, two and three, and then I'd watch the making of. And every single time I watched Star Wars, I would watch the making of right after as if it was the fourth film. Yeah, and I kind of did that with everything. And, I, and I'm basically DVDs when they came out. I was like probably like seven when they started getting popular or like eight. So I started just buying. I wanted all the special features and I would watch that because I was so obsessed with it. And when I was eight years old is when I made the decision, like first decision as a kid, I told my mom, I said, hey, I want to be a filmmaker. I like this. And that's because when I watched the making of Jurassic Park, it really hit me that these things don't really exist. You know, you can't fight a mummy with a sword in the past. You can't be a pirate. You can't go to a theme park and see dinosaurs, but you can in the movie. And that's why we love movies because for those two hours we escape and we're there. But I realized the only way to really be in Star Wars or go to Jurassic Park is to go on that adventure of making it. Like that, the two year journey, three year journey you do making a Star Wars movie, you're going through the same trials and tribulations the characters are going through, the ups and downs and, you know, the, the good and the bad and the stress and everything that is, is involved with that, that is the Star Wars experience. And that's the closest you can get to actually going out into somehow traveling thousands of years in the past in a galaxy far, far away and fighting. So it's like that clicked with me that the only way I can go to Jurassic Park is to make Jurassic Park someday in a way. So that's what really kicked me off on wanting to be a filmmaker. And then I made short films when I was like 10 years old, 11 years old, constantly making little parody stuff. And then in middle school, I was lucky enough that we actually had this, it was like a new program they just showed, this little film class where you could um, like make little movies basically. So we, we got into that and made my friend Matan, um, who did the music actually for Northwood Pie. He was my partner um, in film class. There was a team of four people. We used to make parody films at first. Like we made like a Godfather movie about like doing homework, um, like a ring parody, mission slightly difficult, like a lot of like small knockoff little practice five minutes. We, like we made like a little cops movie. Mm -hmm. um, with the music and everything. And then in high school, you know, that progressed and then we made our first kind of like more drama based or like, you know, original um, short film. And we made a couple of those. And that was when I think everyone realized like, oh, these people are talented. And I always said that I wanted to make a feature film like right when I got out of college or I don't know how it would be there, but you know, university, like when you're like 22, whatever school you finish when you're around 21, sure. 22, you know. I was like, that's when you go make a movie. But I didn't end up going to school after high school. I went to junior college for a little bit. Um, and then I didn't really finish. I just moved it. I did a Crispin thing like he does in the movie Northwood Pie kind of. I dropped out of school, quit my job and moved to LA in the same week. And right away I started writing this movie which is loosely based off my life and Todd's life, the writer. And just went for it. A lot of people, you know, are feel like they need to jump through hoops to make a feature like someone has to tell you like oh you've made a good music video oh these are good short films now you're allowed to make a feature and I was like no it's a you should just go do it it's a different animal it's a different beast there's pacing and structure and it's a different knowledge and know-how so I just wanted to really go challenge myself and do that but yeah something I've been looking at my whole life and I saw at 22 I was like let's start writing and making this movie and it took about four or five years to finally get done and get out by the time festivals and everything is played but you know, still working on shorts and I'm making another feature film next summer. I've already raised a lot more money for and we have plenty of other scripts written. So hopefully I get to keep doing this and maybe be cool. a real professional one day. <laughs> sure, uh, absolutely. I mean, every, everyone's, everyone seems to say that, don't they? Even if, if they're perceived as being like 
you know up up there making big budget films it's like you know they're they're trying to become a professional and you know, do this properly even though they might have like 10 films in their their catalog yeah. um i think it, i think it's great the fact that you as i said you know you just you had that kind of belief but not just belief it's the attitude of like well i don't need um permission to make a feature film i'm going to make a feature because i've got an idea i've got a story and yeah i'm not going to spend five years making corporate videos or music videos and then make a short and then wait so everyone tells me how great i am and then do it it's just like no i'm i'm gonna do it and it's 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 a journey and you're right it's a completely different set of skills and energy and um process if you're making a, a feature film than a, a short because i think i mean both are really super hard i've only been around short uh films but they felt like you know this surely we're making a feature film you know getting at five in the morning and, and traveling miles and being freezing um, on, on set or wherever you want, middle field, um, for something that ultimately is going to be maybe like eight minutes long. And it's kind of like, well, surely we must have just been making yeah. two hours of it, yeah? Um, so how, how, did you, how did you get funding for Northwood uh, Pie in terms of, you said you shot it for $10,000, which is a tiny, tiny something. And that is like a micro budget. Um, film did you go down the crowdfunding element did you basically convince someone that had some money to give it to you because they'd get a return um how did how did you solve that problem? Uh, the crowd crowdfunding is definitely the, the way um i did a kickstarter i don't know if you, kickstarter you've heard of that so yeah. I, I we ended up spending about 12 on the movie but we made 10 through kickstarter it ended up costing about twelve thousand dollars when it was all said and done um but basically it was just a place to have everybody donate, you know, family, friends, coworkers for me and Todd, the other co-writer, and then the actors. And as we cast, this was, we were none of us of professionals. We, you know, we were all young. The, the DP was just graduated college. You know, the, the, the lead actress, Annika was still at USC and a lot of, basically everyone was still just basically not at that point in their career where they started their career yet. You know, people have just finished school. We're still in school. Um, so we were all excited to work on the project and having the Kickstarter up was kind of a place for everyone who was involved to have their family and their friends um, donate. Um, so we were able to kind of get a little bit from everybody and it helped that, you know, I didn't go to other school. I didn't do stuff, uh, do stuff so I could ask for I, I, my mom, my stepdad, uh, my dad, my, you know, everybody. I was able to get like 500 bucks here, you know, aunts and uncles, hundred bucks here just kind of squeezing everybody until we kind of hit that, that benchmark. And, you know, with a pizza place was free. So, you know, it's a coming of age, like rom-com, like stoner movie in a pizza place. And it was free to shoot the pizza place, thankfully, because Todd had worked there in the past. I grew up across the street. My sister, it's funny, after we finished shooting the movie, now works there um, as the same job as Annika does in the film as the lead actress. Um, so we got, but I mean, the free location is everything, right? It adds so much yeah. production value. And it makes it go a long way. And then also if on top of that, it's when you make a film, it's about how do you make the scale feel big and, and you have to play within your budget, but you know, make the film as, as still have scope. And what we did was every single scene in the pizza place is a different part of the pizza place, but then every scene outside of the pizza place is a new location. So instead of going to the same place outside the pizza place, the 50% of the movie, you're not in the pizza place. It's always somewhere new. We never go somewhere twice. And that was like a key thing in my head. You know, once we're at a lake, then we're at a park. And it's like, if you keep that form of energy moving and that get that rhythm and pace, you can kind of lose sense of the budget. You get sucked into the story. And that was kind of my pitch from the beginning, even in the Kickstarter video. I was like, we're going to make a nice, fast paced, you know, enjoyable, lighthearted film. And it somehow worked out and it was amazing. But it was, we just ran it, run and gunned it and made it ourselves on the weekend. So, um, but you know, the camera today, anyone can go make a movie. For, for even cheaper, you know, to be honest, like we only spent that much because I, I was paying money to get a better camera and renting equipment and stuff like that. But if you already have the equipment, which, or if you already, I mean, even phones today, where I hear people, people say that's like, oh, so annoying. And I agree, I wouldn't necessarily shoot something on a phone, but technically the new iPhones and new Androids do have higher resolution than the camera I shot Northwood Pie on. Um, but it is all about in the finishing quality, I think, and like color yeah. correction and sound design. There's so many more steps than that, that you know, you, I think you can tell a story with any camera. It depends on the story. You just have to play, make the budget fit the camera you're shooting. Sure. So literally, did you, did you approach the owner of the, the pizza place and say, we've got, we've got this idea for a film. We want to shoot it here. Can we, can we do it? Was it, was it like, well, after it closed at night, after 
all the customers gone, you got to use it? Did they close it specially for you? Like, how come they didn't say, yeah, $1,000? Um, so, yeah, I mean, they're just really chill, awesome guys. So this pizza place has been around for like 40 years in Irvine. And it used to be on a corner place and it had pool tables and it was basically the, the place to go when there was sporting events. You know, people had their, 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 you know, soccer, football, which, you know, I'm a Liverpool fan. I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing. I'll just say that because I'm here. Sure. But, uh, <laughs> um, uh, everyone would have their sport, you know, they get the trophies there and that was where the whole families went. But then the place unfortunately closed down, the family retired and it became a different restaurant. But these kids who worked there growing up through high school, uh, in their like late 20s, they actually bought the rights to the name and bought the right to the recipe from them and reopened the store right across the street from where it used to be. It's actually in the oh, same wow. shopping center just across the way, but it's in a smaller location. Hmm. So they kind of saved it. So it's been around for the community for a while. But Todd, the co-writer and act, lead actor of the film, he used to work there and he was still close with them. And these guys are, I mean, super cool. And then like the manager of the place, one of the managers of the place has always worked there. He was my like football, like, coach in uh american football coach in in high school you know so they were like really relaxed people and they were like yeah we love todd you guys can shoot here you know no problem because todd still knows the safety things and knows how to close everything down so it was 50 50 we did shoot there a couple nights where they gave us the keys they literally just tossed todd the keys and said don't burn the place down That's um, mad. but you know That's because mad. of the film you know we we from the moment they closed to the moment they came back in the morning we were shooting so it wasn't really closed for that long. You know, we're trying to get everything in that period they were down. So it's not like we had to lock it up really and leave it. And then a lot of the movie, they're open, which I think adds character to the film. Because if you watch North of Pie, you'll see like, oh, there's those two guys doing a scene. But then the guy in the background doing the dishes is like, he's working because the pizza right. place is open. And there's like a front doing that. But it, you know, it adds so much uh, texture to it. And even though you don't necessarily... There's a, there's a core group of like seven characters that work there that you know. There's a few people in the background you don't ever really, you just see in the background sometimes. But I always thought it was like a sports film where, you know, you watch a movie and it's like, oh, there's that kid that sits on the bench that doesn't really play. He's just cheering when they score a goal or something, you know? And it's, so it's like adds that little, that feeling of scope again and scale. The film isn't so just small. It's like, oh, just, just his friends there. It really does feel, wow, this is a real place. And there's scenes too where, I'm off screen and I can see the customer about to come in the door and we're doing this big scene in the front. And I'm like, come on, come on, come on, hurry, speed it up. Cause we got 20 seconds, but it's great. Cause I actually use it as a transition. Like the customer opens the door, right as they finish their line, they walk by. So I cut to the next scene and it's, you know a lot of like run and gun. And you know, that's the fun of filmmaking I think is problem solving and like what you get on the day. Cause you know, every day you would get a different thing if you film the same scene, depending on the weather and how people wake up that day. I mean, that's the magic of movies that people don't understand is like, it's so, it's in the moment, you know, as much as it's, it's pre-planned as it is, it, everything's in the moment. It, it, it's like the saying goes, you know, you've got to, got to use what you have, you know, like if, you, if you've if you got a pizza restaurant, use that. If you've got a garden yeah. shed, use that. You know, if you've got a broken down car, whatever, it, it's, you know, you can't, well, you mean you can if you've got budget, you can't just always go and, uh, we'll rent this, we'll rent this building, we'll rent a plane, whatever. It's like sometimes you just got to use what's at the end of your street and what you've got access to. Um, what would you say that you've learned from making this that you're going to carry over to your your next feature film? And do you want to talk about what your next feature film uh, is, is called? What, what's the concept? Sure. Um, I can't give away too, too much yet. I probably will talk more about it next year it's in the process right now we're just finished the final draft of the script or the final draft for now is the script the draft that we're sending out to lots of different people and possible producers and kind of mm. so that's a couple of weeks away um but i'm really excited about that because the script is really good but so north of pie is a coming of age like rom-com type of movie and this is actually a horror film but my goal with because uh, i love genre i'm a huge genre person but what I wanted to do with this film and what the goal is, is to make a, a horror film that still has character. And not to say that other films don't, but like a indie sensibility of character. So if you watch Northwood Pie, you know, there's some four minute one takes where characters just sit and talk and it's somehow like super engaging and interesting. And it's just because the dialogue's good and the acting's good and it's the right situation and, stuff, and, and shot selection. Like if you could really pull that off, I think that that's, just as cinematic as moving the camera and spinning it and doing all the cool things you can do with horror. So I wanted to kind of take the dichotomy of those two things and tie it into one. Cause we sure. get a lot of like horror films that are very 
studio based and fast pace all the time. And then we get a lot of like A24 slower pace, but I kind of wanted to meld the two. And the other key thing was as much as I love every horror film, all the Blumhouse stuff, all the James Wan stuff and everything, it's so plot driven that the characters and the great acting, they are not fully, not that they're not real, but they're driving the story so much. And it's like, here's a character scene because we have to get from set piece to set piece to set piece because people are going to the theater and they want X amount of scares. You know, so this movie we're trying to do there, there is scares, but it's, it's going to have long conversations that you're going to like, a, like a, you know, regular coming of age or rom-com movie. And then it's going to lead into a horror film. Um, but if you've actually seen, I've done, I did a killer microwave short film before this, that was actually pretty fun to do. And we suck someone through a microwave. So I love balancing tones and genres, but in the simplest way, I'll just say the movie is about a, uh, someone on house arrest, a girl on house arrest um, and her family, her mom has passed away. And we don't know why she's on house arrest, but she's now moving in and living with her aunt and her um, cousin. Um, and then, of course, over the course of the movie, we learn why she's on house arrest and how her mom passed away and how it's all connected. But um, what's interesting to me, that point of view was like, okay, how do we make a movie again cheap, possibly? A bunch of other movies we wrote, actually, wrote a film we wanted to do next that, that was just like, we needed half a million dollars. I'm like, we have to write something that whether we get 10, 50, or 100 grand, we can still make it. So we wrote this film, and so she's on house arrest. But every movie on house arrest, people are, they're trying to break free of it, right? They don't want to be on house arrest. There's that sense of that itch to get out. They're longing to escape. And I thought, let's change that. I don't think I've really seen a film where the mystery is like, why does she believe she, she deserves to be on house arrest? You know, she's kind of doing the time and she feels like she needs to get through this experience. And it's like, so we're going to uncover what's wrong with her. But on top of that, there's, of course, like an entity in the house and something that's tied into... Um, some, I, I don't want to give away the main conceit. Like there's a sure. simple title and a simple conceit that kind of is the draw of the movie, but I don't want to like quite say that yet because again, it's just going out to producers and stuff now, but I'm sure you're right when I get ready to shoot it or finish shooting it, or even in the middle of shooting it, I'd love to come on here and we even do a, a podcast from the set and we'll have everyone that, say hello. That, that would be fantastic. I mean, so basically if I'm, if I'm understanding right what you say from what you just said, is like, you're taking the experience that you learned in your first feature to go basically, right, we need to not be dependent on X amount of money to do scene one to 20. It's that we need to make the film fit what you've got access to, that you've got this, you've got your story, but as you said, whether you've got $50,000 or $250,000 is you can still make your film, you know, then you just have to, be a bit creative yeah. or very creative. No, that's exactly but... it. That... Yeah, that was the biggest takeaway again was after we finished Northwood Pie realizing we have to do something that we can again afford to do, make sure we can do. And like, again, if, you, if we get a half million dollars, a million dollars, sure we can make it for that much and use a nicer camera and get these actors and do that stuff. But we still have to design it in a way that we can make the film for the money that we're spending. Because I think a lot of people in the indie film, they make an issue where they try to make the film bigger than they actually can afford or to look like. And it actually makes things look cheesier. That's like what a science, a sci-fi channel movie does, right? Like they're, they need a hundred million dollars for these plot ideas, but they only have a couple million dollars. So it looks cheesy. And on a lower scale, I think that happens in any cinema where everyone wants to be Steven Spielberg and so do I and have perfect moving shots and linking shots. But if you can't, if you don't have the right actors, or you don't have the right lenses or camera and stuff like that, it can sometimes feel cheaper and you have to play to your budget. And that works with the story too. Yeah, uh, I hundred percent agree that there's e even relatively big budget films with cinematic releases. Um, try, yeah, try to cram way too much in, and you can just tell that the the F effects and everything else they haven't either had the time, or the budget to get them right. So they look tacked on, they look cheap, they look like they, that it spoils the, the flow of it because they weren't making the film to their budget rather than the budget they wish they had. Um, would you, what advice would you- Exactly, that's like one of my biggest issues with movies today, so it's funny. Mm. Yeah, absolutely, and it, it's more and more common, I think, the, the, the use of um, digital effects and, and everything else seems to be, I, I think, getting worse, not better. Um, what, what advice would you give to any aspiring filmmaker mm. out there that perhaps it's got lots of ideas, lots of stories, but hasn't hasn't made that uh, jump just yet. What, what would be one of the most important things to sort of keep in mind? 
Um, confidence in yourself. I think the biggest thing for making your own film or directing anything is confidence. And it's not like cockiness. It's just like belief that you can do it because making this, what I realized is no one's going to get it done for you, especially at this stage. Right. Like I, I tried to rely on a lot of people and a lot, everyone, a lot of people are so helpful. And I, I, of course I couldn't have done it by myself, but it's one of those things where no one's as passionate as you, no one believes in the project like you. Um, and, and I, you have to will it through. And it's, so you have to have the confidence in yourself that, you know, you're making the right decision and that, you know, it's working out and worth your time and all that stuff. And if you, I mean, if you don't personally believe in yourself, it's, it's going to be, it's hard to do it. Cause as you said, even making a short film, waking up in the morning, shooting the whole thing. I mean, this shot for 15 days, which is not a lot, but it starts to drain you. And we only shot on the weekends, but you know, you wake up and I'm, I'm, I'm finishing the script and I'm canceling out lines and rewriting scenes. And then we go and all day we're shooting and I basically have to be my own AD and everything and producer and wrangling it. And you almost feel like you're not directing the movie because you're just trying to, to make it happen, right? Like you just want to make sure everyone shows up on time and is, remembers where the location is. And, yeah, yeah. And is okay with everything. And, and then you shoot the movie all day. And of course, like you barely eat lunch because everyone goes eat lunch. And then you're, you're not even hungry because you're so in the zone. And then you need to fix the scenes that we're filming after lunch. And then you're done shooting the movie. And and you have that natural high of like energy because you just finished something you're passionate. And then, you know, it's like, oh, I should go to sleep. And it's like, no, then you want to talk about what happens. And I'm writing scenes for the next day. Then I'm looking at dailies and, you know, it ends up being exhausting. And then you think you're done when you're done shooting. But of course, like the editing always takes longer. Like I, I, I will say this, I did it myself. I always said, it's only going to take me this long to do it. I hear everyone said it. Everyone tells me after, and it, it can be done quick, but the whole process to get it truly finished, I mean, can take a while, especially if, you know, you need other people doing an indie thing you know, sound mix, music, all that stuff, you're going to have to, you know, get pretty knowledgeable on it yourself. And just again, will it through, but you have to have the confidence and that's key. And that's not, and as long as you believe in yourself, I think you should go through with it. And even if you think you're making a bad film, finish it. If you, I, cause I, first of all, there's so much value. Like Christopher Nolan made a feature film before the following that no one's ever seen because he thought it was so bad and threw it away. So mm -hmm. trust me, like go make your movie and you're going to learn so much and you could you, you could maybe you make something awful the first time but you could make the greatest thing the second time because you made all your mistakes that first time and learned and i just think that there's a whole different and even just a short film or anything like just go out and do it i mean that's the fun of today's we have the technology in our hands and everyone always says that but i feel like people do not take advantage of it i don't think there's as many people actually going out and believing in themselves you know like there should be but they when everyone has a camera in their hand and, and I don't know. I'm excited to see more stories from other people. And I love when people send me stuff. Like the best thing about North of Pride, it's such a small film, but the people who do see it do seem to be inspired. Some people like, I know two different people have written scripts because of North of Pride and like have sent them to me after. Like, thank you for inspiring me to write the movie. And I'm like, wow, and they send me their scripts and I read it. That's really cool. It's like, I can't believe that. Like this person wrote a script and now this person's making a short film because they see it. And that, that makes me feel good because it's like, I don't know. It's just amazing. It's just like, it's the smallest thing. Cause you know, I'm not really making any money off. It's not a big thing. But if someone can just say like, oh, I like the movie. I enjoyed it. Or it makes me want to do more filmmaking. It's like that I somehow feel like I accomplished something that day. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, where can people find out more about yourself? Are you on social media? Do you want to men mention any site you, you have that yeah. people can follow you and contact you? Um, I don't really have a website personally, but you can go to northwoodpie.com. It's that simple. Northwoodpie.com. The movie's there. Links to all the to watch is everywhere there. I, I think it probably sends you to the US links for things, but if you type it in on Google, it, it should pop up right away. That's the coolest thing to me. Like just getting to the point where I Googled my movie and I got a little sidebar. I was like, I made it. I got a Google sidebar. <laughs> like it was the greatest moment of my life probably. So yeah, so Google the film. You'll see that. But you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter or anything. It's just at J Salahi, J-A-Y-S-A-L-A-H-I. And I respond for good or bad to anybody. Like, I'm, I'm not famous, I'm nobody, I just made a movie. So if you watched it, you love it, hate it, just you can, I mean, DM me, I reply. Like people send me scripts, short films, like I will literally watch anything you send me. I will read anything you send me. You wanna collaborate on something, hit me up. Like, why not? Like, I mean, you just wanna tell me Absolutely. how you rank the Hobbit movies. Like, tell me what you think about the Hobbit movies and I'll tell you what I think about the Hobbit movies. Like, let's, just, I mean, I'm just there to, to talk to. If you want advice on making something, that's fine. Some people randomly hit me up like, oh, what camera did you use? And what sound equipment? And do you think this or that? And I, and, and I have no problem answering questions or trying to help out. That's, like, that's cool. Hit me up, DM me. That's, that's very, very cool. Um, 
Jay, I'm going to thank you for your a brief time with us uh, today, but we will do this again because there's, there's tons thank of you. stuff we could we could talk about. And I will put all the all the links up uh, when I post this online. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I had a great time.